Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is an introduction to DC motors. Now the earliest power system in the United States were DC. But in 1890 AC power system uh, were introduced, was introduced and this started winning over the DC system because of its ease of transportation. Now this, despite this fact, DC motors continued to be in use and still used even today. Why? Let's see that. One reason is that the DC power system are still common in cars, trucks and aircrafts. And another is the application of DC motor in a situation in which wide variation in speeds are needed. Now, before uh, we go into the uh, further discussion, we'll talk about what is called speed regulation. That means how much does the speed vary when the motor is loaded. So this is a scenario. This is a DC motor. It is not loaded. It is running freely. And then in this case we have attached a load. So we want to see how much the speed changes because of this application of load. So this is done by uh, what is known as speed regulations. And the formula for speed regulation is this. This is the angular velocity, angular speed of the um, no load minus angular speed of full load divided by angular speed or rotational speed at full load. Now this is in radians. If we take out the radians, then this is the normal speed in RPM. So, speed in no load minus speed in with full load divided by speed with full load uh, and multiplied by 100%. So, these are the formula for speed regulation. Then there, are, there is a positive speed regulation. That means the motor's speed drops with the increasing load. So, this is natural that as we keep on increasing the load, the speed should drop and that is why it is called positive speed regulation. But it is possible that a reverse happens, that is called the negative speed regulation. That means when the motor speed is increases with the increasing load. So we will see in the subsequent lectures. Now we need to draw the equivalent circuit of a DC motor, but let's see the pictorial diagrams. This is the stator which has field winding in it and it is represented by this diagram here. So this is the uh, field winding and field diagram. Similarly, you know there is a rotor which rotates inside this uh, stator and the rotor also has windings so that is represented by this symbol along with the this dot represents brush so actually you see here the brush is connected because when this thing rotates the brush either takes out current or it provides current to the armature and this is how the brush looks it is spring loaded here is spring loaded from both sides and so in DC motors with brush you can see some kind of a spark when it is rotating especially you might have seen drill machines which do spark okay so this is one of the uh, way of representing the field circuit this is the field circuit with some resistance in the field coils and this is the inductive part of the coil and then you may add, uh, add an uh, adjustable resistor with it. The rotor part or armature part is represented by the symbol 
and it is actually a voltage source it is called, represented by name of a voltage source ea so you might have heard the name which is called the back emf or induced emf so this is that emf the drop in the brushes are represented by this uh, voltage sign which is opposite to the current flow so this is a, actually a kind of a resistance or opposing RA is the armature resistance, so the, the armature windings, uh, its resistance is RA. Now the armature circuit is represented by an ideal voltage source EA, so this one, which is the EMF, and a resistor RA. The brush voltage drop is represented by a small battery V brush opposing the direction of current flow in the machine. So we saw that here. The brush drop may be left out because it's very small voltage. The internal resistance of the field is sometimes lumped together or combined together with the variable resistor and the total is called RF. So we'll see in the next diagram here you can see this and this has been lumped together and this is called RF. So this is another way of representing. Similarly here we neglect the battery or do away with the battery so we have only uh, the resistance RA. The internal voltage generated here either due to the generator action or uh, back EMF of the motor both are EA so it depends on a constant K and the flux produced and also the uh, speed of the motor or angular rotation of the motor the torque produced by the motor is also have a similar formula its K and phi remain same but instead of a speed now it depends on the armature current IA We'll come across uh, what is known as magnetizing curve. So these are the three possibilities. In one, we represent the uh, flux phi versus the magnetomotive force. In other, we have represented the magnetomotive force and the induced voltage. And in the third, we have represented it by the induced voltage and the field current. So since they are all interdependent because IF is dependent on the magnetomotive force. Similarly EA is dependent on phi and that is why the shape is same. Same graph with different names uh, has been used. So this is called the magnetizing curve for DC machine. Now there are five major types of DC motors. First is called separately excited DC motor. That means the uh, the field coil is connected with a battery or another DC source separate represented here by this and the armature is provided connection with that separate source. So this is on this side. So that is why it is called separately excited means the field uh, has been uh, provided current separately or voltage separately. The other option is the shunt DC motor. A shunt means parallel. So now the field is in parallel with the uh, rotor or armature. So you can see we can connect it like this. So the diagram will now become like this. This is the armature circuit and this is the field circuit. So field circuit is in shunt or in parallel with the rotor circuit. The third type is what is known as permanent magnet DC motor where instead of a field coil we have permanent magnet and you can see here this is a permanent magnet this is rotor inside it and uh, these are the brushes. So 
you can see this could be the equivalent diagram where we don't have any diagram for the field because that is a permanent magnet. So all type of uh, small toys, shaver motors, drone motors, uh, etc. They are the permanent magnet DC motor also called PMDC. And even um, one of, uh, group of my students, they made solar car and in that also they used a permanent magnet DC motor. The fourth number is what is called the series DC motor. Now series DC motor means the field winding is in series. So the same current is flowing through the field winding and then through the armature winding. So this is in series and since heavy current flows through this therefore uh, the this has to be with a heavy wire and few turns you don't need many turns so I've just shown it with a little dark line that showing that uh, heavy wire is used for the series field coil and finally we have what is known as compounded DC motor which is a combination of series and shunt and you can see in this diagram which is courtesy of uh, Mr. PT this is the shunt winding and this is series winding so shunt winding uh, series winding and shunt winding series winding thicker wire and less turn shunt winding thinner wire and more turns now there could be two possible connections one is that you uh, this is called long shunt that means the shunt or the parallel uh, field is far away from the rotor so this is long shunt the other could be we bring it early so this has been brought here so this is called short uh, shunt. So these are the fundamentals of the motors. Now we'll study each of them one by one. I hope this gives you an, a preliminary idea about DC motors. Thank you.